Give me a minute here, okay? Do not, please don't start while I'm drinking this drink like you did that one time. I won't, but I really didn't mean to that one time. I just wasn't looking. I My peripheral vision was like blocked off. I just like spit it out. It was... Did you? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> just, wait, that just now? Mm-mm. Oh, before. A couple yeah. weeks ago. I, did, I really wasn't paying attention. I didn't mean to catch you off guard like that. I thought you had finished it's okay. <laughs> eating. <laughs> Everything's good. Okay. Hello, welcome to the episode. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Did you want to? Did you want to? Yes, <laughs> we're gonna redo it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's gonna be funny. To that might be the intro. I like the pre-intro. Oh my god. All right, Troy, say something. Remember when we were supposed to have a podcast? <laughs> podcast. 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 Hello! Welcome to episode 21 of Lemon Tea Podcast. I am Lem. I'm T. And uh, we welcome you. And before we wel- we get into anything, we should probably say hello to Mr. Wanho here, right? Wow, this Wanho. feels like something we did in the first few episodes and forgot about and then started we doing did. again. <laughs> it's like nobody who, if you didn't watch the first couple episodes, you won't even know. <laughs> no, no, and no. looking at the ratings for the episodes, you didn't. Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. Sorry, Wanho. Sorry, Wanho. People just don't care about you. <gasps> wow. That's not a way to get him to come on to our podcast. I really want to talk to him. I know I do too. He seems so sweet. He does. I does he just... speak uh, good enough English or? Uh, yeah, I think to... so. Yeah. I, I mean, he has English tracks and stuff. So. Nice. We need him on. Yeah. But yeah, we are on episode 21. Eh, 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 eh. 21. Does 21 have a, any significance to you? Um, The K-pop group 21. Yeah, that's what I meant. Oh, yes. That's, yeah, that was my singing. <laughs> For CL, who wrote a song about <gasps> oh, Dr. Pepper, right? Yeah, not sponsored, but it could be. <laughs> Didn't she sing that at a Sprite? Yes, she did. Like <laughs> at a, a Sprite, Sprite back concert? Or at a Sprite sponsored concert. She sang her song, Dr. Pepper. We totally talked about this uh, before because I brought up the fact that, like, I think sometimes Dr. Pepper is manufactured by Coca-Cola and sometimes it's manufactured by PepsiCo. Yes, you did talk about that. And I actually had no idea either way what it was, so. It's weird. It's weird shit. Yeah, so. (sighs) Are you all right? Yeah. How are you feeling? I'm doing great now that we don't have to eat disgusting candy. (laughs) It was... (laughs) It was not fun. Your husband really liked the good ones, Oh, my right? God. Like, when I was saying in the, in the last episode... He's a freak. Well, yes. Yeah. Yes, I did say that. But I also was like, he, no, don't throw that away. He'll eat those. Um, mm-hmm. And then I wanted proof, and I sent you a video of my husband by the handful eating just a handful of good and plenties. He is also my age. I don't know if me saying that would have confused you, the listener or viewer, with maybe uh, a 70-something-year-old, uh, but he is 30. Uh, <laughs> and he just likes good and plenties and whatever else we ate, but he doesn't like candy corn. That's the limit. Candy corn, huh? Mm. You know, I want to stay on the topic of your husband for one moment. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Because this week he did something that kind of like... <laughs> It, it 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 just kind of shook a lot of people to the core, yeah. Like uh, a little bit. Uh, the core, yep. The core. Mm-hmm. All right. Your husband likes to because we live in the north, mm-hmm. and a lot of people like make fires in a fire pit. Not not like arson. Um, <laughs> God, I hope not. And they, you know, we grill things and we have like s'mores and shit, and mm-hmm. it's fun, right? Yeah. Nice social activity. Yeah. And you guys have a fire pit. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to have a fire, right? Yes, he did. Okay. And instead <laughs> of like planning it out, he didn't. Didn't. <laughs> and instead, what he did do was he made up a, like a group chat, right? Mm-hmm. On, on, on Messenger and yep. dropped a whole pe- bunch of people in there, named the chat fire or some shit. Yeah, just the word fire. And then... Dropped in a pole <laughs> and, then and then disappeared for like eight 200 hours. Epi- uh, 200 uh, messages. <laughs> 200 episodes we, later, we he was back. Little, we got a little derailed. <laughs> so 
first question mm-hmm. why <laughs> okay so it started when we on the it was on a monday we were burning things we had just like we, we were burning um our friend we had, I, we had hosted our friend's three-year-old's birthday and Correct. there was a lot of excess like paper stuff and josh and i were like let's burn this mm-hmm. um instead of recycling it uh and so we burned it and he said i think i want to have another fire tomorrow and i said oh well you know you and i will be this our gym day you and i will be at the gym um i said listen i'll be at the gym but uh you should you should ask people this is my fault basically because then he made the fire event invited all our friends and just said fire tomorrow uh here's a poll does that work and then he left um <laughs> he he literally did leave though for hours and not even like leave the chat he just left looking at his phone yeah um and then we got sidetracked we're just a bunch of friends who like memes and stupid things we're sure um we have a simple i i think it's maybe a simple sense of humor maybe it's really complex too though and we don't take ourselves too seriously a special kind of person to understand our humor and i was the first person to use a gif in the chat god forbid and josh was like you're the one who derailed the whole thing, not realizing who our friend group was. Um, next day, I realized Josh never put a time <laughs> for this fire. And you asked him and he said, when I get out of work and I and, you know, not the most helpful answer. And no, he did no. not get out of work at a timely manner. It was not the most helpful answer. So the fire was canceled and we rena- renamed our group chat. I renamed it the fire festival, which is brilliant. Um, brilliantly done josh doesn't know what that is but that's okay um he'll learn yeah and then there was supposed to be a fire yesterday but then i was like uh, i hate to be that person but i think it's supposed to rain that day um so then there was a fire at your house and by fire it was jackbox and occasionally the tv had a, a fireplace going on it yeah we did and we had soup um, nice which was cool it was nice uh, fall vibes you know good but soup good soup (laughs) but your husband yeah uh god bless him like good guy yeah i i do love him Mm -hmm. he's great sometimes i want to punch him in the face he he really is an all or nothing kind of guy because i told him i'm like people like more advanced notice than the day before or like the day of and he's like well if i don't i have to do it in in that moment i don't plan things ahead so it's either it gets done or doesn't get done i'm like I think even when it gets done, it doesn't get done. <laughs> but when he's great, but it's like he is great. It's made me. I'm really crap at planning. Like I'm not a planner. I look at people like your wife who plans like uh, as if it's her second job, um, and she's getting paid six figure numbers for doing it. Um, she really could do that for a living and be totally oh my good God. at it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, but I look at myself and I'm like. I plan sometimes, but not to that extent. And it yeah. makes me, by comparison of my husband, feel like so much of a great planner. <laughs> you you are like, compar- in comparison to him, <laughs> yeah. you are my wife in that regard. Like, yeah. Your, your planning is that level compared to him. Because- although, yeah. Go ahead. I said, uh, we're, although we're both kind of forgetful and we joke often that like our, like in sitcoms we're, our child's going to be the one sitting on like the curb by yeah. the side of the school with Josh and Just I saying, waiting. I thought you were going to pick her up. I thought you were going to go pick her up. Yeah. I'm not pregnant by the way. Just to clear that up no, with no, anybody no, no. who might be listening. This is not an anyway, announcement or anything like that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> what a weird way to announce it too. Like, just, oh, you know, by the way, I've told nobody, but hey, Josh, but anyways, yeah. uh, so he's not massive, great. massive, massive text <laughs> message back and forth he came back to like like, like you said 200 messages or something like that pig pile of and not talking about the fire i have to give you a, a lot of credit in mm. the sense that you were trying to let him see like hey is there a time hey he's trying so hard do you think it'll rain like you were just you weren't saying like let's not do this i didn't want to be the if this was his thing i didn't yeah. want to do it so yeah yeah but anyway so two you of wanted those- to help him in that regard but you wanted him to do it so to yeah i yeah i yeah i get you <laughs> so to those of our friends who are watching the podcast right now um who attended fire festival thank you and i'm sorry <laughs> oh no we got him back yesterday like crazy yeah crazy amount the, yeah they i were, saw that one picture oh uh, <laughs> that was uh me and another friend who were mm. up against each other 
and we said the same exact fucking thing. Yeah, it was good. It, it that that's not where it ended. It was the no, whole I, effing night. Jo- Josh told me. Okay. I did tell him too. I'm like, just expect like they're going to do. You've this. made some people a little annoyed. <laughs> they will get back at you. <laughs> but I, I do want to say it's all, it's all in good fun. Like it's oh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not something like. He knows that too. Annoyed is the best word that I can think of, mm-hmm. but it's not really annoyed. You know what I mean? Like just mm-hmm. like, yeah, it would have been fun, but it didn't happen. So there will be a real fire outside, not in the rain someday <laughs> at a planned and scheduled time. But anyway, so. Absolutely. Well, anyway, that's That was great. our week. But uh, since so since the last one, Halloween's mm-hmm. happened. Now we're in Christmas, essentially. You're just going to go past Thanksgiving like that, huh? I, Especially you? I know. Wow. No. Yeah. Well, but before we talk about Thanksgiving, how was your Halloween? Because you have two little ones and that makes holidays a lot more fun to, to do. It I was wonderful. Assume. We yeah. had a great Halloween. They have a ton of candy. Uh, they still? still oh yeah i have been whittling it down like it's it's me who's making the bag go down it's, it's definitely me. me it's me <laughs> uh but like I'll, I'll sneak out all like the the ones that i know that they won't eat oh like what i don't think they're too fond of like kit kats and things like that so what i've been, been taking them what i don't oh know oh my man. god your children they have some weird interests they have and some that's weird... fine but it's like also the fuck man like what are, they're missing out kit kats are are, are goaded right. goaded fucking candies for real. Um, except for the white chocolate ones those can go far away those can go far away but sure. anyway so you've been picking away at the candy you don't think that they'll eat and they yeah. haven't it goaded. was fun so halloween was fun yeah we went trick-or-treating with uh, another friend of ours mm-hmm. um and and uh their son mm-hmm. uh because our kids are around the same age and uh it was good there was some crying from the younger one just because oh really i don't think he quite knew the concept oh like you could only take one or something or no 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 he was fine with that sometimes he didn't want to take any of them but i just think (laughs) he was kind of learning how to trick-or-treat and didn't really understand the full concept Oh, okay once he got into it he was much better but like learning curve oh yeah yeah my kids were like "Ah," running up to the fucking door just (laughs) ringing the doorbell fighting over who's gonna fucking ring the the doorbell they love the doorbell i know you that's that's my fault I don't, I don't regret it, though. It's fine. No regrets. It's fine. We don't have a doorbell here, so thank God. You used to, though, didn't you? Here? I thought so. Nah. <sighs> Missing out again. Apart- your children. At the apartment. Oh, yeah. they weren't a, They weren't a, around for that. <laughs> Depends on how you define... I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, <laughs> All right. Pro choice. So, I, so, <laughs> so Halloween was good. Halloween was good. We had yeah. a fun time. They have a lot of candy. Mm-hmm. Um, I went out like a day or so afterwards and all the candy selections were shit, man. I usually mm-hmm. go out and get like the discount shit. Yeah, because suddenly candy is not up to par anymore. Um, it's with, not if, good. It, if it's in the shape of a pumpkin. so It doesn't taste good. It just doesn't hit the same. Nah, give it to me. <laughs> but there was really nothing there. Yeah. And then um, here we are. We're in the Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's going to be Thanksgiving. I'm not sure if we'll do another episode before Thanksgiving happens. I don't think so. Not before, after. No. So I guess this is the time to talk about Thanksgiving. It's the it's the holiday of my people. And I don't mean like white people. I mean like my actual family lineage going back to the Mayflower. The Mayflower. That's <sighs> yeah. crazy. Hmm. Um, by the way, the rock isn't, isn't it's not real. All right. Well, we've said this before. The it's rock not, isn't real. I'm gonna. I know we've said this before. I'm gonna say it again. All those stupid BuzzFeed or Reddit questions that are like, "What's the worst tourist place you've ever been to?" and they're always a Plymouth Rock. Yes. It's like, yes, for yes, you're you're right. Hundred percent. But also, it's it's literally as advertised. It's not like solid gold rock that shoots fireworks and throws candy into crowds. Like <laughs> you get what you pay for, and it's free. So like, it is the it is a rock. It's just a rock with the uh, the date sixteen. It's just called out. rock. For copyright reasons, it's, yeah, just rock. There's the rock. I was making a Rick and Morty joke. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's lost on me. <laughs> you know that joke. I do? It's the, it's the same one we use for plane, which we'll get into later. That's from Rick and Morty? Oh, God. We got to talk. We don't have to have a talk after this. Our <laughs> long fucking talk. I've only seen like four episodes of Rick and Morty ever. God. Yeah. Okay, anyways. So Halloween's over. It's Thanksgiving. Um. It's Thanksgiving. Eat pie. Uh, have some, have some dry ass turkey. 
turkey my brother actually he makes like he started this tradition of making like a turkey. thanksgiving sandwich no thanksgiving sandwiches yeah like there's bread rolls so he mm-hmm. just takes turkey and then gets mashed potatoes and gravy and then i don't know what else he puts on there cranberry sauce maybe yeah, it's a real thing they call that the pilgrim here and okay that makes sense yeah mm-hmm. it, it's everywhere like that's a big sandwich but I remember my grandmother one Thanksgiving, she was like, I guessed, like seeing my brother <laughs> like mesh all the foods together. And she's stuff. like, but how gross. Well, she's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> that is a crime. No. no. <laughs> you will oh. be. Uh, but yeah, so it's Thanksgiving. And yeah. so awkward family times and <laughs> football. And yeah. Sorry. No, no. Go ahead. You ever hear that song uh, called It's Thanksgiving? yeah okay which one <laughs> it's the one with you know the guy who produced the rebecca black it's uh friday video yes oh 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 it's, it's thanksgiving. thanksgiving yes we 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 are gonna have a good yeah. time yeah oh my gosh yeah oh i forgot about banger that song. i'm playing that next all uh, right yeah <laughs> copyrighted yeah but thanksgiving uh it's fine i don't have particularly fond memories of thanksgiving just because it's kind of an in-between thing mm-hmm. i'll tell you like I have fond memories of (laughs) having Thanksgiving and then as a teenager leaving to go to my room to play World of Warcraft. Oh, yeah. The food's done. Food. No more food. Bye. (laughs) Bye. See ya. I'm a teenager. See you later. Me and my brother and my cousin would do that too. We would just go to my grandparents' basement and they had, uh, it was like a uh, finished basement and they had like a computer set up down there and we'd play Jazz Jackrabbit. (laughs) So. See? Such a good game. Um, Yeah, cousins are always a lot of fun at, at, uh, well, if you get along with them, which when I yeah. was growing up, of course, we all did. And mm-hmm. We hung out and yeah, it was a lot of fun. I think, uh, yeah, it, it is, it's just like one big, it's a one big family dinner until somebody brings up some political stuff. Yeah. So, which is also a one big family dinner yeah. in some, in some households. So, oh, politics. Yeah. You going to do any Black Friday shopping? Um, no. <laughs> online. <laughs> Cyber Monday. Probably Cyber Monday. I would like to think that that's the one good thing about, I think I've said this before, but that's like the one good thing about Amazon and other big like retail online stores is that I want to believe that it curbs Black Friday shopping. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it has. I think the number of Black Friday shoppers who actually go out is it's like dramatically low. Because well, like the whole concept of Black Friday is so insane. And like, <clears throat> why do we why do we do this? Um, I did it once just to try it. I did too. Yeah. Although here in Massachusetts, um, it's, I get, I, I guess, I want to say illegal. I know, but it's like you can't. The doors can't open at midnight here in Massachusetts. It's always been one a.m. Yeah. Which, is kind of nuts. I'm not gonna lie, because like <laughs> if it was up to me, if the doors open at midnight, like one a.m. would be when I'd be getting back and going to sleep. Like I'm not. I don't want to stay up <laughs> that late <laughs> just to stand in line in the cold because it's the end of November. It's like a like a blue collar law here it's like uh yeah and it makes sense because you shouldn't have anyone working on thanksgiving day you should have that day off no and... yes or at least like just open at a well a reasonable time yeah like yeah give them close early or like something to give time for them to be with family or yes. whatever um but I, i'm i'm happy to see more and more the trend of places being closed for the hall ho- that holiday mm-hmm. um yeah most places are closed on Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yes. When I worked at uh, Home Depot, they were closed. The two days that they were closed were like Thanksgiving and Christmas and no other day. Mm-hmm. But uh, God, the it was... The bare minimum. Thank goodness for them. I got I got to spend Thanksgiving with my family. That was good. <laughs> and go in for fucking Black Friday at 530. <laughs> you said, I don't, I don't know how to take that. It doesn't sound very sincere. That you're... No, it's great. <laughs> great. It's a good company to work for, yeah. for sure. Me and my brother did Black Friday once just to see it at Walmart. Um, yes, ma'am. And it was fun. Like, it was fun to watch people. Like, I wasn't looking for anything, so it was fun to be a spectator. And yeah. then me and my brother just bought, like, an ice cream bar and <laughs> just left. <laughs> so That's the way to do it. To go as a spectator is a whole different animal than mm. going in and looking for shit. Like, we did it once, and I think we got, like, a couple of things that were on sale. Mm-hmm. But it was miserable, like the <laughs> waiting outside in the cold, like because yeah. it was like twenty degrees that that uh, oh, wow. Thanksgiving, like mm-hmm. it was fucking really cold. Uh, freezing my ass off, getting inside, 
being surrounded by a ton of fucking people who were mm-hmm. yeah you and know like running dinner down with shopping carts it was crazy yeah to try not to get hit yeah and, but especially now with like with covid times i think now especially more people are going to be more more inclined to just sit, stop um going out in person and just go shop on monday yeah it's like so much more convenient it's when it's like one of the few times where I will heavily advocate that you just shop at Amazon instead of like going out <laughs> on Black Friday. Yeah, it's just safer. It is. Uh, when we were growing up, mm-hmm. and and even while we were like, even now there's been like crazy products that people go to uh, Black Friday for. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was Tickle Me Elmo, and that that fucking <laughs> toy like killed yeah. people. Like people got trampled for that mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. It was like 96 or something like that. Like mid 90s. Yes. Tickle Me Elmo exploded. Me and my brother were not one of those people. My mom did no. not have to go out. and no. Although we were two and f- well, four and two at the time. My mom um, uh, loves us, but Jesus Christ, I don't think she would ever <laughs> do that. Thank God, too. She Thank would do God. anything for love, but she wouldn't do that. <laughs> Me love. Oh, I will ask you. Uh, but yeah, so so there's Thanksgiving, which we're going to acknowledge for less than a day, and then we're just gonna dive right into Christmas. Um, I'll tell you, we'll probably put our tree up like the day after, though. I'm really, I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm surprised. Oh shit! Never mind. She said she's doing it soon. <laughs> yep, your yeah. wife is one of the ones. She happily proclaims that um, the second that Halloween is over, there's usually a tree up in your in your house. Not she, the case this year because um, she wasn't around for a little bit, but. Yes. Uh, that just means she's overdue and your tree's going to stay up until like February. She goes by the Mariah Carey rule of thumb that like once midnight hits. Oh, and it's like November those two 1st. pictures. Yeah. And it's like mm-hmm. the jack-o'-lantern and then all of a sudden it's fucking Mariah Carey yep. in, this, in the Santa suit. Mm-hmm. That's her. Yeah. She would have it up all of November and all of December. <laughs> yeah. And uh, some of January. Yeah. You know, you keep your tree up for a little bit after New Year's. Mm-hmm. I think that's fine. I keep all the decorations up until after my birthday because my birthday is two weeks after Christmas and yes. I want it to stay nice and decorated for me. <laughs> not a bad thing. So. Not a bad thing at all. But yeah, so uh, we're some of us are already Christmas shopping and some of us are trying to pretend that Christmas isn't quote unquote right around the corner. It's really like six or seven weeks. A couple out, of but... weeks away. I need to do my shopping. I've done none. None. Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday. So. So anyway, preemptive happy Thanksgiving. Um, happy Thanksgiving, buddy. Don't get trampled in a supermarket. I mean, in a superstore. Or, or anywhere. Or a supermarket. Or, or anywhere. Supermarket. Yeah. So, yeah, don't get tra- don't get trampled at a superstore. Do it at a supermarket. It's better. <laughs> you can hydrate. Hydrate. Get trampled in the produce section. Pro-, pro tip, if you ever find yourself in the midst of people trying to step on you, you want to like... You want to make sure that you're back is the one like facing out yeah and cover your head and if yes cover your head very important and if people trip over you too bad that's good right. <laughs> what you should do is if you're being trampled actively grab somebody so they can be trampled with you that way you don't go down oh, by yourself like in squid game you just grab the, the head of the person in yeah. front of you <laughs> i want to rewatch that because i'm actually kind of getting excited for the prospect of the, of the new season i don't know when the new season's coming out i'm assuming mm. probably next year Probably. But I really like Squid Game, so mm. I'm excited for the new season. I'm curious what they would, they would I don't do. know. Curious to find out. But. I don't know. And his fucking red hair that sucked. Oh, my God. Yeah, his red hair. His that red hair was so stupid. sucked. Um, spoilers. Uh, Whoops. You've had like a year to watch it, but mm-hmm. it's fine. Uh, but yeah, True. so happy Thanksgiving and then happy Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Fat Tuesday. I don't know. <laughs> fat Wednesday. Fat Thursday. Fat Fat Friday. <laughs> fat Friday. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was Thanksgiving. Uh, should we get into the uh, other shit? <laughs> you mean, do you mean all the, the deaths that have been happening the last two weeks since our last episode? We put in an episode and uh, every week, every fucking week. And if we didn't already name a previous episode, Rip the Legend, yeah. like... I, there's at least, at, at the very least, like five episodes in recent Lemon Tea podcast history yep. where we could have used that title <laughs> and it would be a, it would be perfectly applicable. But yeah, there's Correct. a lot of a lot of death happening, man. It's it's rough. It is rough. Uh, first one that happened right after we uh, 
right after like right after we recorded that thing mm-hmm. i think actually maybe even during it uh the like one third of migos which is a rap group mm-hmm. uh named takeoff he he was shot and killed at a bowling alley yeah i kept reading things <clears throat> that it like stems from some sort of gambling thing supposedly but like people said it was basketball related i don't Hmm. know exactly what happened i mean none of this is a good reason to shoot someone anyway so. no generally don't shoot somebody at all uh <laughs> but yeah man he was i mean i think he's in his 20s or some shit mm-hmm. uh hang on i'll find it right now i didn't realize they were that young they are young they are young uh they might not be that he might not be that young i might be misquoting that hang on but number one Take off. Mm-hmm. Rest oh. in peace. The legend. Mm, rip the legend. Okay. Rip the legend. Yeah. Um, and then it was like, oh, I know a group he's from. And surely yep. there won't be any more prolific death for a little while. Um, and then Aaron Carter died. How old is take off? <laughs> he's 28. Oh, oh, he was 20. That's he's so 28. Young. Aaron Carter, on the other 34. hand, was 34. Mm-hmm. Which is also very young. Um, Super young. There is no official cause of death, but he was found unresponsive in his bathtub and the assumption. Um, also, his brother, Nick Carter of Backstreet Boys fame posted on, on, I saw it on Facebook, actually, one of my friends. It's one of those stupid Facebook things where, like, if your friend comments on something that you're not a fan, you a fan of, you see it. It's like, there was a reason I didn't like this page, but whatever. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he posted something on Facebook and kind of alluded to it being a mental health and addiction sort of thing. Mm. Um, and I don't know. I feel... I don't know Nick Carter's history. I'm not going to look it up right now. I'm trying not to use my phone too much. Too much. But uh, I think he also went through some sort of like maybe addiction struggles. That whole family is really like it's it's brutal to be a Carter. You told me um, that one of the siblings died. Yes. Another sibling who also <clears throat> I believe was one that had a singing career. Um, Leslie? Yes. Leslie Carter. I don't know how she died. Maybe I should look it up. But um, they also had like a reality show and, you know, Nick and Aaron did not have like the greatest relationship, which actually... um, It was on the show. You could see it, right? Yeah. And Nick said as much as well for um, the like on his Facebook post. (laughs) Yeah. I haven't read it, but... It was very very sweet. He was basically like, you know, we haven't had the best relationship and and everything so um yeah she also died of an overdose so runs in a family it's a it's just like teen like teen stardom and especially if you have like clearly you got three carter siblings that are in show business you clearly have some sort of overbearing parent who wants to like make their kids famous (laughs) and stuff like clearly um so i don't know i feel for nick because there was a video going around the backstreet boys were on tour um in london and so they had to perform the next day and like you could see nick really trying to hold it in and stuff and like why didn't he even show up i know i wish he just didn't i just just wish he wasn't there (laughs) but he yeah it was hard because um yeah i forget the song they were singing but um it like took on a new meaning it was very sad uh, but but yeah so um some sketchy stuff that's been going on with aaron carter after his death though i guess like so i guess maybe it was uh maybe it was already planned i don't know he had a an album that was released two days two days after his death um which i'm assuming if it was released it must have almost been done anyway um there was a unfinished memoir about him in the works and it was unfinished because they hadn't had chance to like check the credibility of sources but they're pushing to get it published like Mm -hmm. like this week which that's really soon which is really scummy Whew, to the point where uh, Hillary Duff actually mentioned it and basically said, like, that's really scummy. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so I don't know. There's a lot. It's he had a tough life and he he walked so Justin Bieber could run, you know, and that's like it sounds like a stupid thing to say. But like teeny bopper, blonde boy, like baby face sort of, you know, whatever. It's hard. You, then you look at someone like Hillary Duff and just like, how did you get out of that? Like relatively unscathed, the I think, I think child show business. It's very rare. Yeah. Like, I think more often than not, you, you end up like really, really hurt in some way. As soon as Aaron started to get face tattoos, <clears throat> not to judge people with face <laughs> tattoos, but like, you, I don't know. Also based on just him in general, I was just sort of like, uh-oh, someone needs to go check on him. <laughs> but it's tough. Like he was clearly 
you know I mean, he struggled suck. in the past yeah. clearly with mm-hmm. other stuff i think he's already had said like he'd used i don't even know what drugs he's used but yeah but um so he's had issues and uh obviously was still struggling mm-hmm. so that's horrible so rip the legend yeah known for such songs as uh aaron's party and how i beat jack and how i beat jack yeah which is my personal favorite aaron yeah. Carter song I'll, I'll be honest it's the one i know the most and i know aaron's party the most okay it's a banger Shaq is a good one too they're both like real storytelling like songs very linear storylines <laughs> it's like oh and candy he did candy yeah they're just basically songs that sound like somebody who was lying to you in fifth grade would say no no guys it really happened i really happened we had a party at my house there was like a hundred people there yeah they they knocked over a lamp and my mom got that lamp in france oh my god i forgot that line yeah so anyway rip the legend aaron carter rip the legend aaron carter all right and then the third one which is more recent <clears throat> and i would think actually warrants the whole rip the legend uh saying was uh Kevin Conroy. Kevin Conroy. That one really sucks. Uh I like I don't obviously I don't know Kevin Conroy. I've never met Kevin Conroy. Mm-hmm. But like he seemed always to be kind of a really genuine guy and he's been a lot of things, Batman related things mm-hmm. that um have gone on since we were kids. Yeah, I re- I seriously didn't realize until I was like looking into all the tributes how far his like batman career spanned i had no idea since 92 Mm -hmm. 92 with batman the animated series which um the one i know is a great fucking series Mm -hmm. like i remember watching that when i was a kid like i remember first time i saw it was like at a dentist's office (laughs) oh and it was on you know like that little like fox blocks of like Mm -hmm. shows but like that was a great show and then he did he was batman and batman beyond Mm -hmm. and there were other Batman series that he was in, but most recently, he was in the uh, Arkham games that I played. Yes. Arkham. Um, and I didn't realize that he was still like the like. So if it's a, I don't know if you played any like movie tie-in game, uh, Batman games. I haven't. Okay, I'm curious if they would have him do the voice, or if they would try to get like Robert Pattinson or whoever to do the voice too. Sometimes they replace the voice of from the movie, but. I don't think they did any movie tie-in games just because um, they were all already making the Arkham series. Oh, okay. At the time, those uh, mm-hmm. those uh, movies were coming out anyways. Um, and with Pattinson, they've already got like um, the Arkham series and Gotham Knight. Which, yeah. So, um, and behind you is a letterbox that says uh, R.I.P. Dark Knight. So, that is for Kevin Conroy. I'm not done talking about Kevin Conroy. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, there's a lot to say. He was There's he a was a say. legend. He's a legend. Yeah. I saw um, posts on Twitter about him mm-hmm. from Tara Strong, who is another uh, voice actress, icon, legend, and has some notable roles within bat- different Batman series. Harley Quinn. Yes, most notably. She's a couple other characters too, in other in different series, but oh, not yeah. Harley Quinn. But she's yeah. a Raven in in Teen Titans. Yeah. Uh, you could like. Go on. For oh, like for Tara hour. Strong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. met within the Batman series. But oh, yeah, yeah. For uh, for Batman, she's Harley Quinn. So, yeah. um, who else was it? Uh, Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill, who was uh, the voice of the Joker in that series. Who is the person I most associate with the Joker for any animated anything. I think his voice for Joker is, is perfect. Isn't it, side, very quick side note, isn't it crazy the trajectory of Mark Hamill's career where yeah. he was like the, like, the heartthrob boy of star wars a yep. live action show and then he suddenly found himself like not at all like with his face in on the forefront but his voice i think that's really cool yeah me too and i think quite honestly i think i like his voice acting better than anything else like that he's ever done i think his role as as the joker is prolific yeah so but anyway so um so since Kevin Conroy has died. I found a like just a couple of facts about things. Sure. Um, there was some story going around um, from him where he said he was like helping at a kitchen during 9-11 mm-hmm. and um, someone was trying to tell all the other people there that this was the voice of Batman and to, they didn't believe him until he did the voice and it was compared to like a kid finding or seeing Santa Claus or something. It was like... It's incredible. Very sweet. Um, also, he had only recently come out um, this past June 
for DC Pride, which I also did not know. And I think th- that alone is very cool. Like, I don't know. You just think of Batman, you know, this like gruff hetero character. Yeah. And it was voiced by um, a gay guy, which I think is really great. Um, and I'm glad he at least got to like tell his story before he, he died because it was only this year that he came out. So like he did. He penned a comic mm-hmm. that was about his experiences yeah that's and a great comic it's it's so cool because he's like batman was the perfect role for me because here is a guy who spends his time masquerading as somebody else mm-hmm. and that's what he had to do for a lot of his life yeah so um so i think I'm, he's incredible yeah. i'm only just finding more out about him now and i'm kind of bummed because he seems like a very like yeah fun profound guy he Does. um he died at the age of i believe 66 from cancer so Fucking cancer. His dude. was the only quote unquote like natural death of all these three, but it still right. was, you know, seri- like still gone too soon, sort of thing. Seriously. Uh it sucks. I had only recently just started getting into like a lot of the Batman stuff. Uh I know I said I watched it as a kid mm-hmm. and I did, but like now I'm really watching and actually like absorbing all of it. Yeah. And and just getting into the character and, and now he's gone. <laughs> it's sad because I'm like, oh, yeah. he's not in Gotham Knights. He's yeah. not the voice of Batman in Gotham Knights, but maybe Maybe they'll get him back or they'll do some more Arkham games and it's like, who who, who replaces him now? You never know if there's so. stuff in the works. It's, you know. True. There's, you know, there's other, there's like actors or singers, Aaron Carter, that have like <laughs> stuff that's released posthumously from, you know, after, or I don't know, like most of it was finished or I remember there's one movie with a very long name I can't remember that had Heath Ledger in it and he died before it was finished and... It was like some sort of like quirky fantasy role. So it actually made sense in the way that they rewrote it that his character was now played by a bunch of different other actors, including like Colin Farrell and stuff. And, um, but there's, you know, I may, there's hope that he has recorded something else since before or if they have a backlog of his voice because, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, it just sucks. It does. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, that was probably the most impactful one for me uh, personally, just because I'm like, damn, this is, this mm-hmm. is awful. Like I just started really, really learning about Kevin Conroy. You mean out of the three? Yeah. Deaths? Oh yeah. No, oh. I, I, I'm not saying that the other ones aren't impactful, but to me, they're, like, yeah, to other people. Yeah. They're like, this is the one that I resonate the most with. So, and I, and I don't know, I haven't gone through, you know, my sadness over celebrity deaths as well. Anyway, like mm. I don't subscribe to the whole, that you can't feel sad for their passing mm-hmm. because you didn't know them or never met them. You know, like yeah. for famous people, part of their whole deal is that they do have some sort of impact on the life or outlook or whatever of somebody. And that's a profound thing. And so when that's gone, you do feel it. So if you're sad, be sad. And it doesn't freaking matter if you ever met them or not. It doesn't matter. Preach. Yeah. Preach. Absolutely. So. So that's. Kevin Conroy, man, he's a legend. Uh, mm-hmm. Always be a legend. I think I'll probably rewatch uh, Batman the Animated Series now. So, yeah, I, I, when you, I, mm. I did say that uh, I watched, I knew him from that one, but I actually didn't. It was Batman Beyond that I knew him from first. Batman Beyond is such a good. That fucking, one's a good one too. So good. That one I would probably rewatch. But. Yeah, that was a good one. So rest in peace to all the legends. Rip um, the legends. Can, if we could calm down. Be a little bit yeah i feel like a lot's a lot's happened this year yeah but yeah. but anyway for so. sure like that's that's not you're going crazy here 2022 you're trying to get your quota filled by the end of the year i get it you only got a couple weeks left let's calm down you know what that that one soundbite of yours could also be referred to hmm? someone uh working for twitter Oh, let's calm down and meet our quota. And oh, good. Very, very nicely done. <laughs> I don't know, it just very sounded very done. much like that would be something that like someone would say to Elon or vice versa. So anyway, oh, hey, Twitter is a dumpster fire. Kind of. <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> well, it's like, OK, literally like at, he's only owned Twitter for two weeks. The span of the last time that we recorded an episode and it's gone from like zero to negative 900 in the span of two weeks negative 900 is actually very good i would consider that to be a good number because it's like fucked 
fuck to hell and back is what it is. I think so. There's some lovely people who on web pages who have made timelines of shenanigans that have happened since his takeover. Bless them. I'm sure they're getting paid for it, but I would never, ever waste my time trying to figure out all this mishmash of stuff. Did you find one? Um, I found one from IGN um, I I dating one. all the way back to like April when he first was talking about buying and then the whole fallout and everything. Sure. Um, oh, fuck, I did have it. I had a whole article from the Times. You have an article. Well, so it all it all started on October twenty seventh, ladies and gentlemen. The uh, the fall and fall of Twitter. Uh, Elon Musk. Oh, this is what. <laughs> <laughs> so the same day he uh, did a complete takeover of Twitter, he fired the CEO and the CFO, the head of legal policy, uh, trust and safety, and general counsel. And the same day, he walked in with a porcelain sink <laughs> because why? I already forgot. Uh, let that sink in. Comedy is legal again, people. The absolute fucking king of comedy walks into Twitter HQ carrying a sink and saying, let that sink in. God is dead and we have killed him. <laughs> our fault so that was october 27th on october tw- uh, 30th um it, there was news of twitter reportedly planning to charge 20 dollars per month for verification even for those already verified um which was only partly true because then on november 1st elon uh said that he would only make it eight dollars we should all be so grateful wow the old uh bait and switch there huh yeah with his now infamous tweet of Twitter's current lords and peasants system for who has or doesn't have a blue check mark is bullshit. Power to the people. Blue for eight dollars a month. That's like that blue for eight dollars a month tacked at the end is like when you're getting a like one of those um anti antidepressant or like Viagra kind of commercials <laughs> and it's like it will do this and then side effects include da 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 uh like you, and like one of the things was saying that you would only get half the ads if you pay eight dollars a month. It's, mm-hmm. Which is like either uh, ads or no ads. Like you yeah. don't get to be like, well, you just have half. You have half the amount of ads, but no. It, so Twitter used to have advertisers <laughs> before all of this. Uh, so it it may have made a little bit more sense at that point. But mm-hmm. now uh, nobody's getting ads because nobody fucking advertises on Twitter anymore because it's a shit show. I mean, yes, I do. I mean, I do still see ads on Twitter. But you do, but I'm saying I'm being extremely open oh, with yeah, my point yeah. right because he's an idiot. You mean the guy who played Wario on that really funny sketch on Master Saturday Night Live is an idiot of comedy, and he got owned by Hard Drive. <laughs> yeah, so funny. Um. Yeah. So Twitter Blue, new Twitter Blue, would people get? Priority in replies, mentions, and search the ability to post long video and audio and receive half as many ads. Just half. What a Just bargain. Wow. And a stupid blue check mark that really doesn't mean anything. It doesn't. <laughs> Some of them. Most of them. No, they. No. The ones that have check marks who haven't paid for them. Yeah. They're prolific in some way. They're either. It's like in, yeah, government, politics, entertainment. I think it says when you click. Yeah. So to find out who's a real blue check mark person, you have to go to their profile now and click on their blue check mark and get. It's either one that says they've paid for this or that they earned it. Yeah. With like all their Boy Scout badges or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you have to go to their profile every time to find out if it's like earned or not. Um, But while all that was happening, he uh, laid off 3,700 employees. 50% 50% of the staff there. Yep. Fight 80% of the engineers. Mm-hmm. And so now there's a class action lawsuit because it's in violation of federal and California law to not for not giving employees enough notice. Wee! <laughs> he, um... I know you're reading through it, too, but, like, mm-hmm. he fired too many fucking people. They, they were all supposed to, like, wait for emails that either uh, said you, you have a job or you don't. But mm-hmm. then that night, like the morning, uh, the night before they were supposed to get the email, mm-hmm. they noticed that they couldn't log into their shit. So like, that's the answer. I no longer have a job. And the other 50% of people have to pay for their lunches. 
Yeah, because they used to give people free lunches, I guess, at Twitter. Mm-hmm. He also used to allow people to work from home indefinitely, and he took that away, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because he's a fucking boomer. Yeah. Um, if you're not working from your work, you're not being productive. You're not working. I don't know why I gave him a southern accent. He's from South Africa, but whatever. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, on November 9th, Twitter added an official non-paid gray verification yes. checkmark, which then died. <laughs> it's back now it it is but i think it's only it's not a check mark it's just the the banner that says official in gray it isn't gray it is a like a light gray check mark mm-hmm. and those people still have a here's a really freaking like i here's a great idea that i don't know why they haven't done why not just make the shape of the check mark different <laughs> like that's that's it you don't need to put a bunch of badges on uh about like if you're real or not, all you have to do is just like you make the the cloudy looking one, the official one, and then you just make like a smooth circle for the paid one. Mm. And I don't True. even own a spaceship. And I came up with that. <laughs> Maybe you should. Uh, why are they doing anything? Right. At this I, point? Yeah. Like, like. It's only gotten worse. Mm-hmm. There's talks now of, 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 uh, of bankruptcy. Oh yeah, we're gonna get to that part on the timeline. So, sorry, I, I didn't know. No, if you were no, done no. Reading or not? Um, along with this, it was it. also um, he was also on this crusade to get rid of parody accounts. Mm-hmm. Um, so the likes of Ethan Klein from H three H three and Kathy Griffin are no longer because they pretended to be Elon Musk and didn't specifically specify that they were a parody account. Um, although I kept reading that that was like in terms and conditions of twitter anyway um i'm not sure if that's true but i think it was i i don't actually but who reads them nobody well <laughs> nobody it's just him being on an ego trip is what it was like yeah oh yeah definitely more than anything else like yeah they maybe they fucked around and found out right mm. but more than anything else comedy is supposed to be back right and, and legal mm-hmm. well that's parody that's comedy <sighs> that's that's why his whole when he he wrote this like big old three page thing on twitter after he bought twitter saying like i like i always wanted it to be like a neighbor or a community like a neighborhood a public square is what he said a public square yeah something stupid like that but then at the same breath he was like no extremist views from the left or the right and it's like okay you can't can't say you want a diverse, Only centrist a diverse public square and then say, but not for you and not for you. I don't mm. even like either side. I'm not extreme left or extreme right. And I also think that those people, for the most part, are pretty annoying. But they are entitled to their their opinion and free speech based on the, you know, the Constitution and amendments and all that good stuff that often gets misinterpreted sometimes. But that's all right. Anyway. You think anarchists are annoying? <sighs> you know, I mean, it's an unpopular opinion, but it's mine. <laughs> so... But yeah, you can't have it both ways. You can't say that you want like a place for people to be able to speak diverse opinions and then also say, but not for you. That makes no sense. He's he needs to read up on the First Amendment, maybe. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. I don't think Twitter is violating anything to do with free speech because, first of all, they never like it's a. It's a public forum on the internet, mm-hmm. and they don't guarantee you free speech, anyways. Like, it, no, like, yeah, it's, it's not a right there. Yeah, it's yeah, not, it's not a right. So, like, I don't like. I think anyone should be able to say what the fuck they want. It's just within this, reason, but yeah. Um, it's just the censorship, or the idea of like cherry picking what should be on the platform because that's how that's how China operates. So. Oh boy you can't use pictures of winnie the pooh i'm just saying but anyway but elon musk he's a billionaire he's got an ego and it was an ego purchase like yeah if, if it's him buying it to be a like a free speech defender or whatever and to protect blah 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 mm-hmm. and then he like overvalued it made For, a 44 billion billion dollars and then they're like holy shit okay fine we'll sell then he's like i'm not doing that Mm -hmm. and then they said it yes you are (laughs) we have a contract Mm -hmm. 
And then he said, fuck. <laughs> I assume. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, what al- else we got? Uh, well, along with his reign of terror, just be- he was suspending accounts that were parody, but not specifying they were parody. Meanwhile, because of this new buy a blue check mark thing, uh, other people were making verified <laughs> accounts of other people, including it, but not limited to... <clears throat> Joe Biden, George W. Bush, Rudy Giuliani, Ted Cruz, Ben Shapiro, Nintendo, and Elon Musk himself. There's been so many Elon Musk accounts. Like, everyone's changing their picture to Elon Musk and then doing that shit. Mm. Um, Rudy, Gi- Rudy Giuliani was a really funny one because he was just saying all this insane yeah. fucking shit about how Helen Keller was a dusty ass bitch or some shit. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> no, I no, I didn't see that. Um, I don't even know if that account still exists, but I don't know. The Nintendo one was funny because it was just Mario doing one of these, yeah. one of these guys flipping here. off. Yeah. Uh, God, I gotta post that picture. Mario too. to Chris Pratt. That that Mario who was flipping the camera off showed more fucking class and <laughs> dignity and and attempt than Chris Pratt could ever. And I said that shit. Mm. But, uh, yeah, the Rudy Giuliani one, I didn't know he said that about Helen Keller. He, not really him. I'm just, I'm just saying. But how would you know? You have to go to his profile and click on the stupid blue check mark. Yeah. Although, actually, a lot of these accounts also, like, they don't even try with their handle, like, or their, their at. Yeah. They just change their handle name to match whatever the person's name is. But yeah, they're... because if you're, like, some... If you don't know like what's going on and you see this shit on Twitter, it looks crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody spoofed Chiquita Bananas and was like, <laughs> oh, God, what did they say? Ooh. Hang on. This is actually really important. Okay. <laughs> this is important. I'm sorry. I'm stopping the show because no, I had no, a thought fine. about Chiquita. But again, ba- all I'm saying is bubbly blue check mark, circle blue check mark. And that's all you have to do so people know that they are a parody account. Or not a parody account, a, a, a Twitter blue account. I got it. Go ahead. So it's a it's an image. It says we have just overthrown the government of Brazil. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> and then it says we apologize to those who have been served a, a misleading message from a fake Chiquita account. Oh, that's the real one. We have not overthrown a government since 1954. <laughs> oh, they're good sports. Yeah. Good for them. If I liked bananas, I would get some Chiquita bananas. Oh. Uh, which is true, by the way. They, they oh, were wait, really. Yeah. What? Oh, Chiquita banana. What? Yeah. Yeah. What a they 1954 do? Guatemalan coup d'état. What? They were part of that. Uh huh. Jesus Christ. All right. Uh, you learn something new every day, folks. But yeah, people started doing that shit. Chiquita banana. Mario, everybody under the fucking sun. Hmm. What came next? Um, November 10th, which in this current moment in time is yesterday. Nope, two days ago. Um, Whatever. Anyway, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. It's all one day. (laughs) Elon Musk reportedly tells Twitter employees that bankruptcy isn't out of the question. Yep. Yep. I wonder, was bankruptcy out of the question two weeks ago? (sighs) Was it? I don't know. It just seems like there's some sort of coincidental happening here. Um, on top of that, they also could be at risk for billions of dollars in fines from the FTC. Why is that? Was it something about hooking up your credit card to Twitter or some shit? Um, it said that they, uh, the it gives the body authority over its data security practices with violations potentially resulting in hundreds of millions or even billions of dollars in fines. Um, it doesn't say why. Oh, Jesus. Why? So I'm going to go with what you said. No. It, okay. Don't go with the what i said but i know that there was some dumb idea that he had thought of like to god how the fuck something about putting your credit card and like having it like i don't know bill you or some shit i don't know that seems like a bad idea i don't like that <laughs> he's such a weirdo man um and then so actually what is he con- yes considered yesterday as of this recording um he has suspended people being able to buy twitter blue accounts I wonder why. Who could have seen this coming? It's a mystery. I don't know. <laughs> that sucks. So um, so yeah, um, Twitter's going great. 
um i've already asked this to you but uh would you what is your threshold of staying on twitter and to like what point would you maybe say uh i think it's time for me to go i am going to be playing with the fucking orchestra until the the sip uh, oh, the ship like starts the titanic sinking. Going down with the ship. And just go down with the ship. I'm not leaving. Where am I gonna go? Right. Yeah. Where the fuck am I gonna go? Uh, Reddit? No. Oh, I like Reddit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like, whatever. <laughs> oh, well, it's fine. Um, <laughs> like Instagram? No, I don't really post mm. pictures and shit. Yeah. I like to, but I, it's not really a place that you can really have conversations. Right. So, um, not Facebook. Fucking no, never Facebook's, Facebook. Facebook's only a necessity for real life things like staying in touch with relatives and posting albums and that's and messenger and that's pretty much it um there's other sites uh, there's like everyone's talking about mastodon which is another kind of like twitter oh but people say it's like confusing and not easy to use so i i haven't even thought of that and i don't know ma'am uh, i guess i'm going back to like forums tumblr. <laughs> i don't know i'll be on tumblr people said tumblr is bringing back porn so that might be cool it's happening. Power to the boobies. <laughs> it's because Yahoo bought Tumblr and then everything went to the wayside. It was so obnoxious. Who owns Tumblr now? I think I'm, I'm not sure if it's Yahoo still or not. Um, they must be noticing that their numbers went down. And coincidentally, when their numbers went down, um, that's when they got rid of the porn. Uh, but I <laughs> I wasn't in it for the porn. I just want to clarify. Um, I've bonus. been on tum- Tumblr since like college. Since like, no, before that, like 12th grade. <laughs> so like damn i've been there i still have an account so if for whatever reason it's um twitter's going very very down with the ship um i will tumble i will tumble too uh twitter is not owned by amazon anymore they're owned by a company called automatic you mean tumblr tumblr did yeah. i say twitter yeah uh, whatever twitter is owned by elon musk and we are all so grateful um oh god the second Twitter would ever make me pay for anything that I would be able to have normally use for free would be when I would leave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I only started using Twitter because of the pandemic. When I re- remembered that I had a Twitter account I made in 2010 <laughs> and just decided to... Damn, you were an uh, early adopter. Yeah, and then I, I stopped using it <laughs> Yeah, for almost 10 years. So <laughs> True. So, so yeah, that would be my threshold. Otherwise... None of the changes are really affecting either of us, really. Like, we're not looking to try to get verified. I, I'm, I'm not trying to get verified. I'm. Although, if the Lemon Tea Podcast Twitter got verified, that'd be pretty nifty. Wouldn't mind we that. Pay, we get paid for But we're it. not paying for that. <laughs> we're not. I want to earn it. I want to earn that. Same here. I'm not I'm not a big Twitter personality. Mm. So, I, I got nothing. Like, nobody's seeing my shit anyways. So, it doesn't even fucking matter to me. I don't even get affected. I just use Twitter to like talk about Asian pop stars. <laughs> That's really it. And guess what? That ain't going anywhere. Yeah. You know, oh gosh, I hope not. But that ain't going anywhere. Okay. Twitter will be around for Asian pop stars forever. Like Wanho, uh, we need his Twitter to stay active always. I don't think he has a Twitter. Yeah, he does. Oh yeah, he does. I have. I see him more on TikTok than Twitter sometimes. For Jesus, I don't know why. Yeah. Right. I feel, mm. like, feel like a Gen Zer. Um, but yeah, so Good that's Lord. everything that's going to happen on Twitter. And seriously, by the time this episode comes out in like the six days from now, <laughs> there will be other stuff that will have happened and it will make half of the stuff we said like really, yeah. well, really old news. obsolete. Yeah, it, it is. It's already old news. It's the most current news. news is just that Twitter blue is suspended from people buying it. <laughs> the most recent news is that Rudy Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani called uh, Helen Keller a dusty old bitch. I love that you i love that that's the insult that stuck out with you for the most i when people call other people dusty it always <laughs> sticks with me because it's funny <laughs> oh it, it's hilarious you call someone dusty like that's crazy I don't, you don't hear that very often actually oh my god one of my favorite clips online is is a uh is like a you know those shows like scared straight mm-hmm. it's like an inmate calling out a like a machismo boy like not not following the rules and being like you look dusty you're not all that like <laughs> jeez but yeah bring back dusty 2022 dusty yeah yeah no hang on hang on i think we're a little short on uh our time here we've talked about all the stuff that we're gonna talk about that was 
quote unquote important and we've got yeah. some other stuff here no we haven't done um a certain corner would you like to do that corner sure would you like to provide music i always do <laughs> all right i'm on a tori's k-pop corner da, 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 da. <laughs> To me, for some reason, it, I know what the song is, but it's always going to be da 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 to me. da 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 <laughs> But anyway. It sounds like a Mario song. <laughs> um, I'll be honest. Not. <laughs> no, don't be honest. Okay, fine. I'm going to lie. Um, There's not a super lot happening in K-pop. One that you had seen trending was a group called uh, Treasure. Mm-hmm. And it was it's a 12-member group. And... <sighs> Let me tell you a story, <laughs> as I like to do for all these K-pop groups. Treasure was originally supposed to be two groups that came together sometimes to be a super group. So they were not supposed to be 12 people because that's a lot. Um, and they did become 12 people. And there was one person in the group who had been with this company since like he was 12, like young. Um, and I think he was hoping to be in not a 12 person group. Um and he and another member were had left the group, so now there are only only ten of them. Um, it was actually I don't know I don't follow them a whole lot, but I know that the one this one kid because it's the same company as Big Bang, and he was like around G Dragon and stuff a lot, so I knew of him. And now he's not there anymore, so I don't know of anybody. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so treasure. That is what you are. <laughs> All right, so treasure. They went from <clears throat> 10 to 12. I mean, 12 to 10. Here's my take on that. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I think that was a good thing. <laughs> I mean, but the two guys that left had been on hiatus since May, I think. But they they said it was like health reasons or something. So people thought they would come back and they're just not going to anymore. So. I'm going to say this. Mm-hmm. I don't think having a 12 person group is a good thing then there's a good amount of groups that you can rule out right now, including Luna. <laughs> That's fine. Um, and I only say that because it just doesn't feel like, I don't know, like, can you really, really care about all of those members? Like, are you going to follow everything that all of them do? Like, Some people would argue that you could. Those are people who do not have jobs. Um <laughs> Wow, that's how really, else can that's you occupy judgmental. how okay maybe how else can you occupy your time with all those i don't know i'm old school man i don't know I, or maybe my brain's just so slower. are you saying that you agree with what i'm saying um that 12 might be a little too much oh yeah 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 the average would normally be like six or seven mm-hmm. which is also kind of a lot too but <laughs> but whatever listen seven is fine just only seven. Seven is fine. So is nine. Nine is fine. <laughs> the fine nine. Nine is fine. <laughs> um, yeah. And the only other K-pop news I have is that there's this one group named Omega X. Um, some of their stuff I've seen trending on like the main like or the main trending thing. So story with them is that they are a, um, a group brought together by a bunch of their boy group and all the boys had maybe been in a group that failed or whatever they're all familiar with the industry so this is like their second chance group okay they did a a u.s tour and there was a video that came out of their ceo um being very verbally abusive and like one of them was like she like pushed one of them down and he was like in the midst of a panic attack and stuff so like oh my god yeah so like very abusive trigger warning i guess uh abusive behavior um there was more news that was coming out about the treatment of it and like how this CEO has been on documented like from fans who didn't realize that that was their CEO. They thought she was just some like angry Korean lady. <laughs> um, but she um, of the, her being verbally abusive. And um, there was more recent news that came out that during the tour, there's there's, there's 11 of them. It's a bigger group. Um, mm. But four of them had during their u.s tour tested positive for covid and she made them perform anyway um so which i don't know that seems sort of like like biohazardous warfare to me it's like if you know why would you put them on a stage in close proximity to other people just seems really irresponsible yeah because you don't have any fucking uh like 
you have no regard for anyone else's safety. It yeah. sucks. So this all, news all came out at the very end of their U.S. tour, but they were all still in America. So the CEO and the staff went back to Korea and canceled their tickets home to Korea. So they had to get help from their parents to go back home to Korea. And then they were banned from using any social media. But then they like rebelled and like opened their own Instagram and basically said, you know, like they don't feel safe and everything like that. Um the CEO, due to heavy backlash, because they tried to save face and be like, this was a one-time incident, and it wasn't. Mm-hmm. And so she resigned, but her husband is the chairman of the company. So everybody was like, nothing's going to change. No. And like, this only happened because she got caught. And it's very clearly like a normalized thing in this company. And the, that's the crappy thing about K-pop. And I won't limit it even to K-pop, but just in this instance, is that you don't know what kind of goes into a training Mm -hmm. for to be a k-pop idol so this sort of thing isn't like it's more uncommon that it's become so like publicized it's it's not it's still kind of maybe one of those dirty industry secrets to some extent for the smaller companies that have more to lose so they're Mm -hmm. like much more like harsh on on people what company was this it's called spire i think they were just made for this group but i can't remember i, I don't know say, if, i've never heard of them no i don't know anything else that they have um so yeah so ceo resigned but it didn't really make much of a difference but then the boys released another statement and the said, boys the boys uh they said we don't feel that we can continue with this company it's like well duh but now they have to go through uh, legal proceedings to cancel their terminate contracts. their contracts yeah so if you see things like omega x or protect omega x or chairman huang resign like that's what those have been um and still the company's trying to save face and they're also trying to now um claim that each of the members owes them like three hundred thousand dollars um each because training is a lot of money um they hire like singing coaches and dancing coaches and um like managers and all these people and they all get sometimes they get um charged for these services Mm -hmm. so i guess it's total up to three hundred thousand dollars per jesus so the company's like we're not taking advantage of them but by the way they owe us 300k it's like no you can't yeah (laughs) pick one you can't do both but um that's the most recent k-pop news and it's actually gotten some good coverage from like i would say the equivalent of like whatever cbs or um, nbc is in korea so one of the major news channels has picked up on it Mm. and usually they don't really give a crap about k-pop ever so it's a big (laughs) deal and yeah so it's all it's just crappy like i don't know you you should never ever feel unsafe in your workplace because whether k-pop fans want to believe it or not k-pop is work for these these idols like it is a job yeah so you shouldn't ever you just should never feel unsafe in your in your workplace which they clearly are k-pop is a career they're entertainers Mm -hmm. um i think you nailed it too like yeah it happens in other other genres of Mm -hmm. of music but i mean specifically k-pop is very like competitive yes and it's very like it's built to churn out stars and i think it's just like that because korea like japan's very self-sustaining so they have j-pop idols and everything and they probably have not as rigorous training but training like that Mm -hmm. but if they never marketed to anybody outside of japan that they'd be fine Mm -hmm. but korea is small and so they've relied greatly on like international interest which is like so I think that adds a layer, a different layer to it of the uh, the training system and just the right. kind of culture in general. So I don't mean to simplify it when I say that like K-pop, since Omega X is Korean, it's it's going to be K-pop, but it's not limited to. Definitely so not limited know. to that. Yeah. But there have been a lot of problems in the past too with, with K-pop groups, right? It's not the first time. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, there's a couple of groups. Um I can think of at least three off the top of my head wow. that had to sue their companies or try to terminate their contracts for unfair treatment and stuff like that. So, yeah, no, it's um, it's rough. And the minimum, it's not, the most common contract to sign into is a seven-year minimum mm. contract. So it's like going to the fucking military, dude. <laughs> so it's like less, more than that. More than that. Yeah, but it's um, that's why there's a term thrown around in K-pop called the seven-year curse. So if groups break up after seven years, it's because their contracts are over. Mm. But it just happens and seven years is a long time to get out of a out of a group of people so i think that's pretty good but it does seem very extreme um i think 
in the past before it used to be like 10 years but they the general consensus was to lower it to seven i think but that was you before think? my time <laughs> but that was, it was before my time so not necessarily good news in k-pop but it, yeah go vote for Dreamcatcher and wanho and the mama awards the mama vote the mama vote you can't do it on twitter anymore and that's actually not elon's fault but we're gonna say it is it's illegal when he made comedy legal again, he made the mama vote illegal. <laughs> it, it had to be balanced. I'm sorry. One got to go. The Twitter blue uh, verification symbol is just a thumbnail of Elon Musk's face as Wario. Oh, God. Because comedy's alive and well. He is a comic genius, some would say. Yeah. Because no one could have made such a fucking comedy of errors. No. When you have something that's established already. And at this current moment in time, it is it is co a comedic thing because I don't have any money in it. and um, It's hilarious to me. It hasn't affected me quite yet. It's just... It will be shitty because that is how I... Twitter was good at, at like being a pretty decent news aggregate. Mm -hmm. And and also like up to the minute, like this is happening. This is happening now. Yeah. It's like you get your news in real time. Mm -hmm. So it... um. It'll suck to lose it. Yeah. If it goes. Definitely. But I don't, at this point, like, I don't even know what you could do. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's very much like Elon Musk is the, like, CEO equivalent of Kanye West just kind of tanking things right now. Mm hmm It's very odd. But, uh, but anyway, so anyway, that was take, uh, Tori's K-pop corner. Um, <laughs> thanks. Um, and that was more of us talking smack about Elon Musk. Why $8? That's such a weird price. Um, it's, it's it's just weird. He wants to appeal to the everybody. peasants. The peasants, right? <laughs> he wants to appeal to the peasants, and uh, I think when he first announced it, he made some sort of like he made some sort of comparison to being like comparable to Netflix for oh, cost. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to having to pay so uh, individual for individual lines or whatever the plan is for Netflix. Um, yeah, no one is, but like, but anyway, <laughs> but like what I'm saying is like, uh, cost wise, like it's, yeah. it's the same as that. And people already have Netflix. So why not get, to, uh, why not get Twitter blue and have a check mark and all that kind of bullshit? Yeah. Like how well that's going. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's produced a lot of memes and yeah. Oh, one yeah. thing I will, I will say the internet is really good at and that I'll miss if it actually goes away is, is Twitter's good at like when there's a big moment happening. Mm -hmm. Twitter comes together mm -hmm. to like tear down or like shit on oh. or, or like encapsulate what's going on with pictures, yeah. memes, funny text. Just like everybody's dialed in at the same mm -hmm. time and it feels good sometimes. I can't think of another website actually where the response to something is more instantaneous. Yeah. There's a reason why shows encourage like live tweeting or whatever. It's like very go 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 it's it's made for that that's mm -hmm. what it is like and I, I i miss it i know i have a couple people on there that i like I, that you're already saying that you'll miss it you don't know what's gonna happen yet he's in shit <laughs> he's in fucking like he's in sell he should sell a spaceship <laughs> just sell a spaceship you'll be fine yeah you'll be fine close down the underground tunnels of his tesla mobiles or whatever that whole plan was <laughs> people were using uh the fake Elon Musk profiles with the check marks to be mm -hmm. like to just shit talk him and talk shit about Tesla and how mm -hmm. how Tesla's explode and how Tesla like I think a Tesla that, uh, that was an autopilot like hit a kid so they were like <laughs> bringing that up all right anyways that's so about Twitter you I, I, mean, I mean there's Clearly, there's no way to tell what's going to happen with Twitter. Like, I think mm. speculating anything, we could speculate anything and it'd probably be like the last thing that ever needed fixing ever that really didn't need fixing and you pay $3.75 for it or something. I don't know. But I, I, I think it's hard to predict. Um, it'll be, I think it'll be a lot more announcing things that nobody asked for and then reneging on them real fast um, because you realize much of <laughs> what, what a mistake it is. We were getting so close to having an edit button. Like they why, were trying like, it out. Why, why? They were trying it out. Elon, it's personal now. It's not anymore. <laughs> I just don't want to have to delete my tweet and rewrite it. I just want to edit it. And you know what? 
Do what every other website does. Have a little thing that says edit. Weren't they doing it? Because the trial run was like you can do it within, what is it, like a five minute time window or something? There was a time. Oh, to edit it? Oh, okay. yeah. Because I think it was to curb that people, like, if there was Retroactively. a. Retroactively. If it was like a hit tweet Oop. and then someone could change it to something like, yeah. I, don't, like I, don't, I don't know. I killed my cat or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think of something that wasn't offensive. I killed my cat. Um, but something offensive. And then it's like, haha, you 400,000 people liked this tweet. So I think that their test run was to do it within five or 10 minutes or something sure. to, to edit it. Yeah. That's reasonable. That's fine. Yeah. Usually within five. Usually within like 30 seconds, I know if I yeah, misspelled something. Yeah, you screwed up. <laughs> like, like, shit. Shit, I meant to write from, not it. for. Or like I, I'm i clearly posting like a picture or something, mm -hmm. and I, there's no picture. It's mm -hmm. just a bunch of text. I'm like, fuck. Or if it's like a picture or you realize that there's accidentally like sensitive information in the picture and yeah. stuff. So. You need to get it out of there. So We were so close. So I close. completely forgot about the edit button. Mm, I didn't. I <laughs> never forget. <laughs> so... A second Tesla has hit the Twitter building. Just... Okay, you stop saying that. Oh my god. Ah, <sighs> uh, well, it'll be fun, and I'll be along for the ride because that's good. I like Twitter, and it helps me pass the time. But at the same time, I don't need it forever. I don't need it. I don't need it. I definitely don't need it. Is it good a place for communities? Like if you want to yeah. find a community that, that likes this or that, you can find it. <laughs> I I'm uh I found some good friends on on Twitter through our go. shared interests. So yeah, I have a uh, a lot of cool Twitter peeps that I follow now. Um, yeah. So it's exciting. It's cool to see that shit. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> What's up? He, he put up a poll asking about what Twitter. <laughs> Twitter is less fun, less more fun, fun, more fun, or LMAO fire emoji, fire emoji, because he's so funny. His his desperation to be like liked by the the younger generation, yeah, like, is like like he's the embodiment of that fucking. How do you meme. do, fellow kids? How yeah. you doing, fellow kids? And it's fucking Steve Buscemi with the skateboard and shit. I wish Steve Buscemi owned Twitter. He'd make it so fun. God damn it, he would be. Um, sad. I'm going to just do M LMAO fire emoji, fire emoji. Go ahead. And go it's ahead. pretty split, actually. When you vote in it, I'll be able to see it. So that way I can vote in it, too. As of this moment in time, because there's only four hours left for voting on it. Um, 2,787,000 people have voted on this. 29% said less fun. 28% said more fun. And 43% said LMAO fire emoji, fire emoji. So... Yeah. You're not going to see this now. You can't vote because the voting is over. But uh, let Elon know if you think Twitter is more or less fun. I think it's more fun right now, but not for the reason that he probably wants it to be. Isn't this crazy? We live in a crazy fucking time, right? <laughs> like, like something happened in like 2016 when we like fucking were on the normal path and we veered off into fucking crazy <laughs> land and it hit and then fucking hit the gas, uh, slammed it on. I want to get off the ride. Like, please <laughs> let us the fuck off. Pandemic and now this shit like. Haven't we suffered enough? <laughs> We're finally allowed to go outside. And then this happens. Yeah. Ah. Uh, you prick. So Twitter will definitely probably be brought up one more time before the end of this podcast. I'm just saying. but <laughs> It's a big deal. It is. And I, uh, I don't know. Someone I was reading through just now, Elon Musk, and someone said very succinctly, um, it's not that he's running a company different than he normally does. It's that we are seeing it in real time mm -hmm. happen for Twitter. But I guess if, I don't know anything else about Tesla or SpaceX or whatever. But apparently, maybe this is not against the norm from his uh, management style. I guess. Yeah, it's like what I what I tell people sometimes when they like they talk about Elon Musk, right? It's like he they're like, oh yeah, but he's so smart. He you know he he's got Tesla and he's got this that and he's got that. Smart. But it's like, but he didn't make Tesla. Like that was a already. He buys companies. Like, he just yeah. buys them. He's an entrepreneur. He's an entrepreneur. Who and happens to be just a little bit tech savvy. A little bit tech savvy. He's like a nerd. Um, he he thinks he's funny. He's hilarious. He is so hysterical. He's hysterical. Yeah. It's really he, funny. He's driving people into hysterics. That fucking post that said, like, fucking... Uh, we're going to be giving away Twitter gold or some shit. If your name is Grimes, please come back. I, I love, love you. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So 
so funny. Uh, I don't know. I still, I really don't understand how he did. How the fuck that. did she fuck him? Mm, that was not my question, but uh, <laughs> that's my question: is how the, she's. Come on. How did she let him name their child that name? I don't even know what that name it's is. It's like X A E, but like the A E where it's one letter and it's then like, 12. like sub, yeah. He's got like a superscript in his name. He's got like subscripts and superscripts and fucking equations and shit. That shit's. Oh, I don't want to judge it, but it's like, come on, man. Who's going to be able to pronounce this? No. Uh, <laughs> no. No, like just. It's setting it's setting kids up for for getting mocked like crazy. Like how the fuck do you explain that? Like, and I know it has some some normal pronunciation because that's mm. just how he is. He's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna troll them all. They they didn't say I couldn't write this fucking equation on here. Jokes on you. His name is pronounced Ben. Yeah, his name is Ben. There guys. was a there's a funny clip that went around where there was a reporter who made it a point to learn how to pronounce his son's name mm. and. I want to believe that Elon didn't, it was probably that he didn't hear the reporter, but I want to believe that it's that he didn't know that the reporter was actually saying his son's name because he goes, who? <laughs> I've never seen that. <laughs> who? Yeah. So I I want to believe that it was that he just really didn't realize. I want to believe. I do. I don't want to believe that it was that he didn't hear the reporter. I want to believe that it was, um, it was just that he didn't know how to say his own son's name. So he ain't winning any father of the year awards. You can ask one of his kids. So, oh yeah, that's horrible. Mm. You know he he's a piece of shit with that too. Like the whole like he's got a trans daughter, mm-hmm. and and I guess he refuses to acknowledge that fact. Well, that, well, likewise, she also something. wants to refuse to acknowledge that fact because she wanted to get rid of her last name of Musk. So, more power to her. Like I said, he's a fucking just not a great person. He may have started out with good intentions at some point in his life i don't know when that oh, was yeah i think so at some point in his life but uh now he he wants to be like the the edgy uh troll mm. wants to be like a it's like he spends time on like 4chan or some shit it's like so weird you know what i mean like he's trying to be like that no yeah definitely so it's just yeah so this I don't is know. the world we're living in god damn it <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have uh, you know, like ten-ish minutes or a little uh, more. We started around on. the ten-minute mark. We did, so I we're actually a little short right now. Do you I wanna... am always a little short. <laughs> I'm so. You know what? That's a good. I'll stop saying that. That's fine. I don't get triggered by that. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um, Do you want to a... talk about any of this shit? Yeah. On a more positive note, um, we went to go see the One Piece film Red movie. Yay! Yay! It was, it was a totally great viewing experience that d- went smoothly and wasn't hindered by any problems at all. Okay, let's talk about this. <laughs> so the, the movie starts. We're sit. Uh, we're seated. Okay, no, hold on. Before the movie starts, before we, the movie we starts. get previews. Okay. Um, oh God! <laughs> Best fucking preview ever. <laughs> okay, there's this Gerard Butler movie, and it's about a plane that crashes. I think in the Philippines. I think it was, and they get, yes. and it's something about like gangs or drug cartels or something yeah. but the the start of it is a plane crashes and if a plane crashes in the woods does it ever and you nobody's <laughs> around to hear it does it ever really crash um <laughs> and on. there was a moment where like you know how text like pops out at you to like say taglines for dramatic effect and swear to god we all thought that the the movie was called the crash because yeah it said the crash and stayed on it for a, a second and then it was like five seconds later where it goes was just another five seconds the beginning it was trying to be dramatic but it was so stupid it was, too, it was so dumb it was dumb and it was too long to leave on like two words that were easy to read yeah so so then we were like oh the crash isn't what it's called i wonder what it's called plane <laughs> it's, called it's fucking called plane, plane. like it's so lazy and <laughs> we were joking like oh it's just gonna be called like plane yeah, or some yeah, yeah. shit right <laughs> plane yeah. we were cracking up dude so yeah i i it's so lazy it's like if we just named the podcast podcast it's just called podcast it's so lazy <sighs> um i don't know how much of a big sell gerard butler is these days but um yeah. really the movie should have just been called the crash i know they said it was just the beginning but guess what if the rest of the movie has to do with like gangs and not being on an airplane then plane is an inaccurate name too so you plane. might as well just call it the crash 
Okay. Bam. Bam. The best part about the crash was that um, the movie crashed several times, and then we got yeah. to see plane trailer again. Oh, partly. that was fun. Yeah. So um, we originally it started out playing the English dub, and I didn't really, I didn't even really realize that that was not the version we were supposed to be watching mm-hmm. or whatever. So we were what we were like what seven ish minutes into the movie. Yeah. And it was halfway through because there's a lot of singing because the main person. Uta is a singer um and it stops halfway through the song which i half of the song was it was already in japanese anyway so it didn't really make a difference Mm -mm. um the lights came on and the screen went black (laughs) and everybody was just like oh that was a really good movie because we're all a bunch of nerds sitting and watching like we're i i get the vibe of the crowd right like Mm-hmm. there's nobody there that i don't think would have us wouldn't have a sense of humor about this sort of thing no yeah. nobody was like booing or anything everybody mm-hmm. was just making jokes um it was like how we it was a little while it was like 10 minutes <laughs> until um someone put the the film reel back on and was hopping around at different points of the uh, commercials and we were actually kind of excited because we wanted to watch the plane preview again yeah, so was... your marketing worked plane. um and then finally we watched the english sub with the japanese audio um we watched it over again so we saw the movie twice <laughs> we did it was great so that was our viewing experience um for the movie itself, what'd you think of it? Because we saw, along with your wife when we were in Japan, um, One Piece film Gold, which I think was it was a really great viewing experience. It's um, really good. To be amongst, like, in the home country of this mega popular thing. And also the version we went to had English subtitles. Which is uh, awesome. Yeah. Which because is... we went to go see Godzilla, like, a week later, and it did not have any subtitles. And we were sitting there just... Laughing at sorry. stupid shit. <laughs> like, why does he keep saying sorry? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, are they Canadian? Um, <laughs> but yeah, no. So the one piece that sh- that and also had Chinese subtitles too for whoever was going to see it. So yeah. that's how big the property is. Is that they were prepared. Humongous. Yeah. So um, I I think that will always be a top tier like Japanese experience to me. Um, it was c- so cool. But uh, but so anyway, yeah. My question was, well, how would you think of One Piece film Red? Loved it. Um. I so it's a musical based film. Mm-hmm. Not that there's not music in other films, but like this one specifically was about a musician. She's a singer. Yes, she's a uh, voiced by her singing voice is voiced by Ado, who is a Japanese pop singer who's really really good. Some of those songs were killer, man. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I, I was vibing out to some of those songs. Like yeah, really good. I'd play the shit out of that soundtrack if I could find it. Um, I wonder, but yeah, uh, Ado, she's a great she's a great singer with a really crazy um range of a voice it was really good um i did think it was a little long it was about two hours Uh, almost yeah yeah and i was i could feel myself getting antsy at some points and it's just how i am anyways but like there was a part well i found the soundtrack by the way it's on youtube music youtube music which i still use come at me gen zers i know but anyway sorry go ahead (laughs) Um, near the end, oh God, this isn't really a spoiler because like, spoiler, just in case, but spoiler, in spoiler. Case. there's a fight scene, right? Mm-hmm. At the end, just like usual. Yeah. The, uh, the climactic fight scene. The shown in a template. So I, it, it was so long. Like it was so fucking long. It like, reminded me of the um, Avengers Endgame fight where it's like, here's a person and here's another person. Like, yeah. there were so many people. And, I mean, I'm sure it's more special. It makes more sense if you watch One Piece. I don't. And you do not. Um, I don't. But there are some people in our friend group who do catch up are, are on, on the up and up in One Piece and probably appreciated all the people coming out. But it was to a point where it was like, just there was so much happening and yet nothing happening because like the villain is still there so but it was just it just felt like it felt like avengers with all the introduction of all these people there is literally a part too where um they're fighting but there's nothing happening but flashes of light mm, like yeah here 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 and it's like so if you are sensitive fuck. to flashing lights uh <laughs> don't go see this movie <laughs> right but yeah it it um it was good. I thought it was a little, just like smidge too long. Mm-hmm. 
but I did like it. I would watch it again. Yeah. And I think it's it's a good movie. It worked oddly as I know that the because part of the main conflict is um strife and distrust and unrest about the public with pirates. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that's a central theme in One Piece anyway. But I don't if it wasn't. It's like a really neat like political social commentary. <laughs> I thought. <laughs> um i'm not yeah. sure if that's one piece's style or not but um and no. i guess that a lot of the stuff um that happens in this film is concer- confirmed as canon um to some degree by the creator um yes so that was neat and i knew the basic amount of the characters involved and so so basically what it is is uh just real quick if you if you are a one piece fan and you know it in any ways and they they announced it ahead of time anyways. It's literally called Film Red. Mm-hmm. So it's about uh, Red Hair Shank's daughter, who's a very popular uh, character in the anime. What? <laughs> no, I just realized that's why it was called Film Red. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it uh, makes so much sense now. So it's about, like, uh, she meets Luffy when she's younger, mm-hmm. and then later on they meet up again. And Yeah. It, this is that story. Yeah. And it it gives a lot of because she's the central character of this movie, um, it gives a lot of backstory on her and her like her history and and things like that. It's very interesting. It's like it it seemed like a familiar plot, but there were some parts of it where it was like, oh, I don't think I've ever really seen anything portrayed like that before, right? Or the twists or whatever. So, because there's twists. Ooh. I think my only other problem with it too was like. A spoiler still um a lot of the characters were not featured at all like it just focused on luffy and a few other people for a very long time because oh. everybody else was like incapacitated you mean the crew? yeah 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 so it was like i think that's maybe why i felt like it was all sort of like a big old like barrage of people near the end because mm-hmm. it's like oh they can help now but for half of the movie they were not really around so <laughs> it just felt a little yeah but whatever, it's fine. Like, I would watch it again. I think I, I would never, ever try to watch the One Piece show because that's too much to ask of me or any sane human ever. Um, but I would definitely watch the... I own One Piece Film Gold, um, and I would watch One Piece Film right again. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was great. I love I my anime movies. really like it. Anime, movie, anime movies are usually pretty good for the most part, mm-hmm. I find, because they, they have higher production, they have, you know bit writing so if you already like the show you're probably gonna like the movie and every time i see an animated movie that isn't directly like targeted for young children it makes me sad that disney has decided that like animation animation is dead and is only applicable to young children because that's not true but no a lot of societies like that though especially like western society Mm -hmm. um we like remember when um enter the spider verse came out like a lot of people thought that was like really childish like Oh, I'm not going to watch that. Like, that's Spider-Man that I'm not going to watch. I don't care mm-hmm. about that. But it's like, that's, it's beautifully animated. Like, there's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's art. <laughs> there's other, I mean, and there's other means of animation, too, that I think are also looked down upon, like, um, stop motion. Stop motion is so hard. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And um, there was this one movie that I saw because of the way it was made, it was called Loving Vincent. And it was made in the style of Vincent Van Gogh's paintings. Mm-hmm. And that's the entire movie. Like it's all, none of it, it's all, it's all animated to that way, but it was imitating like his painting style. It was really mm. beautiful. Um, the plot sort of like, I have to go find this person. So it's kind of like an eh plot, but the movie's really beautiful. And it's things like that that makes me bummed out that we're just like in this slog of Disney remaking their animated properties into like 3D animated things that nobody asked for. So sure. Like three Pinocchio movies, except I do want to see. <laughs> I want to see the Polish Shore one. I'm going to, I'm not going to lie. Why can I go out on my own? <sighs> what was yeah. it? That was so, uh, it, it was like a sound clip from that trailer or a sound clip from the movie that was going really viral. It was what. that one. Oh, it was the, the father. When can I go out oh, and be on my own? Father. I've got a whole world to see. Uh huh. I remember it now. Yeah. It's just so. I I still want to see it. I know it's yeah. gonna be horrible garbage, but. But that's the difference. Is like if you know it's gonna like, it's not. I don't. I don't think it's really trying to put on that much of a front. I think it knows that it's it's not the Disney version or the Del Toro version of Pinocchio. So it's just kind of it is what it is. Here's Polly Shore. <laughs> 
we paid him a hundred dollars and like two snickers bars or whatever <laughs> damn um, he got off good mm, good Oof. deal um meanwhile the pinocchio for disney i think they would play really really straight so if it was like boring or just generally not good it's not funny bad because mm. they were trying really hard to convince people that it's it's good that they remade it into live uh to i think that one was like partly live action i think Part, yeah because i th- i believe um oh, what's his name danny devito's in it is he really yeah i, oh I think he's a circus master or something shoot shit. i wish he was um the cricket oh jiminy yeah oh, that would be funny too pinocchio pinocchio <laughs> but i got but yeah i that's what it's it's films like one piece film red that make me like happy that animation is still a thing in some parts of the world sure it's it's such a taxing but like so like the end product is so satisfying like medium there's a ghibli star wars crossover thing happening i saw that oh my god I'm it's so about excited. grogu too i know i'm so excited it looks cute i'm so excited so like ghibli is is a treasure like that shit mm. is like really really great animation and, and just good stories i've only seen a handful of like ghibli films mm-hmm. it's I probably need to see more of them because they're really good. But I've always wanted to go back and watch the um, the lesser known ones. There's a there's a few that like I can think of what they look like, but I can't think of the names of them. Mm-hmm. It's just like anything that isn't Spirited Away, um, Mononoke, uh, Ponyo, House Moving Castle, House Moving Castle, the other ones, yeah, which I'm sure is, are just as good, but may not have been. Um, I don't know. Maybe if the subject matter wasn't like as appealing to a broader audience or if it came out before like the boom of spirited away or whatever so sure but they are a treasure they are um animation in itself is is, is really neat it's a it's just so interesting uh, like i don't know we drew things on paper and figured if you change the position yeah then you bring this character to, to life like mm-hmm. we had drawings only and then we had animation and and, and now books. we huh like flip books flip books are are awesome i was never good at making flip books but i was obsessed with them yeah. for a while kudos to whoever made flip book that's a lot of patience it is a lot of patience but that's essentially what like well hand-drawn animation is it's like yeah it's a big old flip book mm-hmm. it's a uh, it's something that I think probably like the younger generation can't not that they don't see cartoons anymore mm. because cartoons still exist. Yeah. But I don't know. There's something really fascinating and just nostalgic about seeing like a 2d animation. Mm-hmm. And I mean, all, even the ones <clears throat> that are done by computer are 2d or like hand drawn to start with. Sure. So there's at least artistic merit in, in that. And we're, we've come a long way from like flash animated, like, tv shows slash animated the stuttery ass looking at us <laughs> <laughs> um i'm gonna piggyback off your animation from here um, while that guy's going quick Woo! from from <laughs> wonder if the mic picked that up <laughs> <laughs> maybe shrek 5 or or, or the new shrek mm. what about it it's what happening it? is it yeah what apparently it's a what? prequel what i don't know ashley told what? me about it today but I, I didn't know that shrek the what? new shrek and it's gonna detail the story about why he's in the swamp what what i i feel i'm so upset nobody told me i told you i'm the shrek expert i'm the shrek expert <sighs> the shrek expert Jesus. uh i hope that's the thing i can't find it super right away but if she's not being trolled and I'm not being trolled, there will be a new Shrek movie. And it will be a prequel. I don't know how I feel about this right now. I don't see it right I'm still way. processing. I just see Shrek in Elder Scrolls 6. <laughs> Where the, Are you looking on Twitter? <laughs> yeah. I just typed in Shrek 5. But anyway. New Shrek movie. Those thumbnails. I did, did you see that? Yeah. Those totally legitimate thumbnails. Shrek 5. Everything we know about the movie so far. So it's happening. Ah. it's happening oh my god it's happening ah okay that's so, exciting animation's not dead no it's not no <laughs> no no um damn where are we now we're uh we're pretty much getting pretty much, down to the time I yeah think we're good i think we're probably good if we want to end it unless you want to end on something else 
Um, yeah, I'm going to because it's been my obsession for the last two weeks. Um, what is it? So it's fake TikTok's fault, which is what I call YouTube shorts because it's it's fake TikTok. Um, it was I watched a show, an LGBTQ show called Heartstopper. And so sometimes the algorithm sends me other like LGBTQ shows. And it sh- showed me this like preview of this Thai show called Love in the Air. And I've been obsessed with it for two weeks. It's um, Thailand is pretty well known for making a bunch of um, like gay or lesbian shows, BLs or GLs. And for, the- for those in the know. Um, and this is my first one would you mind breaking down what that stands for boys love boys love or girls love good yeah um i just, I just don't like calling it that because it's like weird because they're all i don't know it's just it's so, so they're not yeah no th- this isn't like some creepy shit it's, no 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 no, it's no. A, they're like very well-made shows and most mm-hmm. of them are like romance based and stuff it's yeah. like it's like any show no, wait a second don't with, you, okay what i thought you didn't like romances <sighs> it depends mm. i think what i like for both like BLs and GLs is um, spent my whole life watching heteronormative relationships. So I find it interesting. Wow, you chugged that whole thing. I am thirsty, dude. Damn. Um, I find it interesting when a different kind of love is portrayed that we're not as exposed to in mainstream media. Yep. So I think that's kind of where my... my okay. There's other... No wrong answer. I was just curious what, what drew you to that because I yeah. know like... In the past, we've talked about, like, I don't know, what we like to watch or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you have stated, like, I don't really like romance. I really, no, like I really don't. I like romances. I think they're good. It depends. I don't write off all romances, but I'm not <laughs> super, I don't know. But yeah. uh, but for BLs and GLs, it's it's a different kind of portrayed love that you don't see a whole lot of. So, um, Respect. Yeah. So, uh, Love in the Air, it follows two different um, male-male couples. Um, it's based on a book series, I guess, in Thailand. Um it's ah, it's really good um and ha- this is also something i don't like in any of my media though but there's like a lot of sex like <laughs> it's like not a lot i think i count like four but they're done very tastefully you don't see anything like that whatever why are you clapping <laughs> but i always hate like sexual stuff in like my media but this one in there, just so you know what you're getting into if you ever decide to watch it. But that it, it, it does, it forwards the plot, I think. There's reasons for it. It makes me like, <laughs> like cringe every time. Because <laughs> it's on the thing that on the hosting site, it's rated as NC 17. Mm-hmm. So that's what you would be getting into. Okay. But, uh, but there's like two different couples, and one's more of like a fun romantic one, and the one that just finished was, um, it's very it's a very dark story um having to do with past abuse of a relationship and stuff like that so it's it's heavier but it's really good i'm not really selling it very well but if you uh ever are interested in <laughs> in a Thai bl or get recommended from fake tiktok um and it's a romance that has too much sex that <sighs> I don't know, man. I don't know. It's not my usual thing at you all. You got your romance in my... You got your sex in my romance. <laughs> it's not my thing at all, usually. Mm-hmm. Oh, but but the couples have really good chemistry and stuff. Um, they do, like, behind-the-scenes stuff to show that they have really good off-screen chemistry and everything. I think it's a very well-done one, and a lot of, like, BL frequent watchers have said that this is their, one of the best ones of the year. So, yay for picking a good first one. I don't know that I'll ever really commit time to it like i did this again it was an obsession for my two weeks for me so that's fine and now it's over so that's why i'm not obsessed with it anymore but it's awesome (laughs) shit (laughs) i thought i was doing something i thought i was doing something cool by obsessing over like batman shit no that is cool damn that is cool i i don't i can't that was my bl batman love oh there you go (laughs) I can't watch like sexual stuff normally on TV and movies. Like I just, it just, I know. I feel like I'm invading a private moment, and it makes me feel very uncomfortable. But uh, I'll see myself out. Right? It's like I'm. <laughs> let me out. <laughs> I can't I need leave. An adult. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. It's it's just a very you know it's a that sort of stuff is very like personal and stuff, mm-hmm. and it's just yeah. So, but uh, it, within the context of this show, it makes the scenes make sense. So. Anyway, if you are interested in a, in a dramatic BL, and romantic uh, BL, love in the air, 
it's on a website i can't pronounce the name of um it's got a lot of i's and q's and y's in the name uh <laughs> go there i'm sorry it's um google it if you google it it'll come up come on it's spelled um no it's spelled i q i y i i q i y i yeah that's, okay that's the name of the app you get it through but anyway there you go just wanted to plug that real quick because what I a was... nice bl for your afternoon <laughs> <laughs> breakfast and lunch Bre- <laughs> <laughs> batman love <laughs> batman is love batman is life rest in peace Kevin I, um, Conroy. Uh, so anyway we're gonna end it there we're gonna end it there uh it could you know it's always good to end on some good old-fashioned boy love <laughs> no it's very it's it's portrayed very sweetly what I, I i didn't mean to say a lot of sex it's like thir- it's 13 episodes and there's like four scenes i can think of um but if you want some sexy boy love yeah perfect that's good there you go <laughs> it took <laughs> go watch but anyway uh Thank you guys for watching this very not uh, at all ever NC-17 <laughs> podcast episode, I guess. Keep it very PG here, except for when we are talking about Dusty Helen Keller. Dusty Helen Keller. <laughs> Rudy Giuliani special at Twitter. 2022. 2022. Uh, yeah, so this was a great episode. I, I mean, the deaths weren't great, but... Um, no, but kind of making fun of Elon was... This is the one before Thanksgiving. Um, the other yes. one will be after Thanksgiving. Yes. And that will be, uh, you know, we're we'll probably going to talk about Christmas shit by then. And then probably in both episodes, I would I would think. We're, we're going to talk about Christmas shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, like from here on out. Yeah. Okay. So just just get ready for that. Oh, 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 it's Christmas. <laughs> I got to play that song now. <laughs> All right. Uh, so if you want to see more of um, Tori here, you can go to her YouTube, which she did not change the handle of yet. Uh, I think it was already changed. You can change your YouTube handles now. But. Pretty cool. We just found that out, right? Oh, no, I didn't change it yet. But whatever. It's um, Go ahead. <laughs> YouTube.com. No, that's slash, right? YouTube.com slash. slash at. Nope. You didn't do anything with the at? The at's not for YouTube. Oh, okay. YouTube.com slash as wrestling with two E's. I haven't changed it yet. I don't know. If YouTube.com it. slash Azeroth's Flame with two E's. I'm also unprivated on Twitter because I want to see if Elon's crusade on bots really worked. Twitter.com so. slash Trippy Desk, T-R-I-P-P-Y-D-E-S-U. Um, and you're unprivated, right? I am. Yep. So send her some stuff about feed or some shit. Ew, what the hell? <laughs> no, please don't. Um, <laughs> or you could send stuff like that to Lewis here at uh, twitter.com slash you know Lumo. Also find him on the same name at twitch.tv. And you can follow our socials, uh, Lemon Tea Podcast, on TikTok and on Twitter. Maybe we can get a special blue check mark um, for being special. That'd be nice. I don't think we will, but... <laughs> Uh, dream big <laughs> if you if you see a check mark it's either a miracle or uh a we fluke. paid for it mm. <laughs> <laughs> or we, we lied we paid for it well, so happy thanksgiving have a good one happy turkey day um don't i don't get into political shit if you can don't help trample it. anybody for a television it's not worth it unless it's really cheap <laughs> no, no it's still not worth it to trample anybody some would say no many people are saying no I would never say. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. All right. (laughs) (laughs) All right. All right, guys. uh, Have a great night and have a great time and, uh, you know, get you some BL while you can on the DL. Okay? Okay. All right. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Bye, Wanho. Bye, Wanho. Love you, boy. Peace. Bye. Get yourself some BL. (laughs) What is wrong with you? On the DL.